Assalamu alaikum. This is Asa from Sunway Admission. So today uh, we'll be discussing about to study in Dubai. And today, obviously, we have a very special guest from Dubai. One is Mr. Apostolos Matsaridis. He's a faculty and professor who has multiple years of experience teaching. His unique ability is to correlate the industry concepts. His industry past experience along with the theoretical concept as he himself has been in organization of large scale events. To add, he uh, has been a part of the organizing team for the special Olympics that happened in Abu Dhabi, Dubai. So he's a consultant to various governments for various large scale projects also. His expertise is in projects and operation management. He brings yeah. to the table vast knowledge in the field of management principles related to the events and sports. So welcome to Apostolos. Okay. And uh, we have another guest. It's Mr. my pleasure yeah. to be here. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So we have another guest, Mr. Shah. Basically, he's the campus director of Renown College in Dubai. And he has been living in Dubai for a long time, gaining a wide set of knowledge on how the Dubai market works and what are the you know, some of the biggest opportunities in Dubai in terms of work opportunities and study abroad opportunities. So I believe from this session, all of our students uh, will be benefited and, you know, they will know the real experience, the practical experience from the, you know, uh, from our two guests. So, so uh, before starting the session, I just uh, would like to uh, share our company details like, you know, uh, Sanu Admission is a uh, renowned uh, foreign consultancy firm based in Dhaka. We have offices in Silet, Chittagong, and Kulna also. And uh, if you want to know any specific question regarding to study in Dubai, so you can uh, write your comment on your comments box, on our comment box, and we can include your question at our uh, live session. So uh, I, first of all, I just uh, will ask to Mr. Uh, Apostolos, that uh, please uh, just introducing, uh, you know, about the Dubai education system. Apostolos, are you hearing me? Hello. I think we have lost him. You know, uh, he is. He's got static. Okay, okay, okay. So, Let's wait for uh, okay. So, I think he will join later. I think some yeah. uh, technical issue. So, and uh, okay. So, Mr. Shah, you just tell me that about Dubai economy. Hmm. Thank you, Mr. Asad, for uh, inviting us to this uh, interesting live webinar. And this is a great initiative that you are taking for the students. I've just got to know from you that uh, this is just one of the series of webinar that you've been organizing. There are very few people, you know, whom I have met who, who have been, you know, uh, doing such an activity for the knowledge and benefit of students. And I understand that you've been doing it for all countries across the globe. So congratulations for such a you know, innovative idea, Mr. Asad. Uh, coming back to the question that you have asked about uh, Dubai. It is the world's uh, third richest country. You know, not many people know, but if you look at per capita income basis, then Dubai is the third richest country in the world. If you look at socioeconomic rankings, then Dubai is always in the top 25 cities in the world. If you look globally, then the top 10 cities which have been getting foreign direct investment means foreigners pumping their money in, then Dubai is always in the top 10 cities. And what to talk about economy uh, and not talk about employment. So 2018 and 19, Dubai had the world's lowest unemployment rate, which means that 99.5% of the residents were employed in Dubai. Only 0.5% was the unemployment rate officially. Uh, so this is a phenomenal achievement for any country uh, to, to, you know, to gain as a laurel, which has the lowest unemployment rate in the world. Now, we have to be very <coughs> cognizant about what Dubai has to offer in terms of its economic pillars. Okay? Uh, so Dubai has one of, been one of the fastest in technology adoption. 
So if you look at any of the parking lots, if you look at any of the road management systems, everything is artificial intelligence driven. By the way, in the month of December 2019, uh, I was myself astonished because Dubai did not have rains, but Dubai had hailstorms. So there was no falling in Dubai. How does Dubai do this? You know, there is, it is called cloud seeding. So it does artificial rains. Uh, they send the rockets above the clouds and they sprinkle ammonia. And that is how the clouds precipitate and there is rain. So having said that, you know, uh, Dubai has taken a very high leaps and bounds in terms of technological advancement. If you look at the pillars of the economy, then in 1960s and 1970s, Dubai found oil reserves. Yeah? Now, everybody knows the story after they found oil. It's like gold below the earth. Yeah? It's called black gold, crude oil. And after that, they started becoming very rich suddenly. But the difference between any other country in the Middle East and um, or Africa and, uh, and uh, Dubai is that Dubai has a very visionary leadership. Okay. So in 1970 itself, the ruler, Sheikh Zayed himself, he saw that you know, we cannot forever survive on crude oil money. So he started diversifying the country. He started diversifying the economy. And he had seen a vision for Dubai, for UAE, to be the center point of the earth. You know? And his predecessors and his successors, you know, uh, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, they have crafted Dubai, you know, into a global city, the world's best airlines. So they first connected the country with the whole world. Mr. Assad, in just four hours of flight distance, okay, in just four hours of flight distance, 2000 million population of this earth can fly into Dubai, which oh. is 2 billion people within just four hours of flight. So they saw this, they saw that the Dubai geographically is between the Western world, Europe, UK, America, and the Eastern world, Japan, Korea, China, the Indian subcontinent, Bangladesh, and other. So they saw that they are strategically located in the middle, in the center. The world's best airlines, Emirates Airlines. Who's not heard about Emirates? Now everybody has a dream to fly Emirates. Etihad Airways, one of the best airlines that. So they created the best airlines. The Dubai airport, Mr. Assad, is busier than the London Heathrow airport today. So they connected the country with the whole world the best port okay so any shipment that comes from china and goes to europe or uh, america goes via dubai jabal ali port any shipment that comes other way comes to dubai jabal ali port first and goes then so they created the world's best port and they boosted trade and uh, you know logistics sector then construction took a boom so aviation sector so first crude and crude oil oil and gas then is aviation sector uh, logistics and trading sector and then uh, they gave a boost to construction sector. One of the best infrastructures in the world. Who does not know Burj Khalifa? The tallest building in the world. Yeah. Everybody so because of the construction sector boom, great infrastructure, they created great safety and security. Dubai is officially ranked as the second safest country in the world. So it is not just the third richest country, but it is also the second safest country in the world. So they made the country great in terms of its infrastructure. They made the country great in terms of safety, security, the cleanest air that you can see somewhere. In, fight, in spite of having such a great crude oil reserves, they are having very large solar energy adoption. Can you imagine? So they are going green in spite of them having a crude oil like water. The cost of petrol and the cost of water in Dubai is the same. OK, so can you imagine? In spite of that, they are doing solar adoption. Then they gave boost to various businesses. This is one of the few rich countries in the world which has 0% corporate tax, 0% income tax. So Mr. Assad, I pay 0% income tax. Okay. All that I earn from uh, our prestigious college is what I take home. You know, okay. And that's true for all our students. So it's one of those few developed countries which has zero tax rates, zero tax rate, high salaries and great lifestyle and luxury. So Dubai is synonymous with the world's top brands having their shops and uh, presence in Dubai. Because of the 0% tax, Mr. Asad, all the multinational companies, now if I give you the opportunity, you know, let's say Sunway admissions, if I give the opportunity to Sunway admissions that, sir, you will get 0% tax, will you not want to enjoy 0% tax? So yes, people started, sure. <laughs> so that's the right reaction. So people started shifting their head offices to Dubai. They started routing things from Dubai because Dubai has 0% tax, 0% corporate tax, 0% income tax. And that gave boost 
to a lot of businesses uh, and every multinational company started opening its uh, head office in dubai so we saw that you know we moved from oil and gas to aviation sector to trade sector then construction took a boom people and residents started coming and living in and businesses started coming in so business services sector took a boom now because of all this great infrastructure uh, airlines uh, and great safety security dubai is the sixth most visited city on the earth mr asad you know if there is a city you know which is most visited then you will say dubai is the sixth most visited city on the earth because of its great infrastructure <coughs> and tourism opportunity so tourism hospitality events and sports started taking a boom because when rich people start coming and living in dubai okay rich people want luxury lifestyle what is lifestyle sports you know when you talk about lifestyle branded things and sports comes first and then entertainment entertainment through the not through video games but through events you know so five star and seven star luxury hotels so tourism hospitality events sports all these sectors started booming in now these are the pillars of dubai you know i will not suggest a student to do artificial intelligence course in dubai if you want to do artificial intelligence and machine learning please go to germany let us understand what dubai's economy is all about and having the world's lowest unemployment rate and one of the most friendly now let's take the example of corona everybody is concerned that wonderful very nice you know through 1960s until 2020 dubai did a great miracle and you told the whole story of how they moved from oil and gas to where they are today so what after covid 19 what after corona virus situation how will the economy get impacted that's a very relevant question you know so i don't have an answer to it frankly but i have some insights it's you know, not an answer but some insights mr asad and the insight is the speed of change covid 19 has changed the world at a very fast speed we have seen digital implementation and digitalization of the next 5 years happening in the 5 weeks of corona virus so the capability or capacity of a country to be economically sustainable is seen from the speed of change just one month back mr asad just one month back Dubai has started allowing 100% foreign ownership of all foreign companies and foreign expatriates to investment. Now that's a very big thing, okay, for a a rich country, for a developed country, which is like a kingdom. Okay, it is big thing because now they are giving 100% foreign ownership. It's an unprecedented step, and they took this step very fast. Uh, World Health Organization just two days back has praised Dubai in its way of tackling uh, the COVID-19 situation. they are saying july onwards tourists will start coming into dubai okay so which is a big fast adoption uh, and they have till now almost tested majority of their residents of dubai so having said that you know uh, and they have also made some changes in the rules like permanent residency until now nobody thought that you know in the middle east or especially in dubai somebody would get a permanent residency but they have brought in permanent residency pathways as well about which you know we will talk in detail if you if you want me to explain more in detail later on we can touch upon so this was my you know generic synopsis about you know what the dubai's economy was before covid 19 and how they are changing and adopting fast for the scenario post covid 19 yeah oh. okay i think you explained very well you know in detail so students they got a very clear concept about uh, dubai economy and uh, okay so i think uh, some technical issue happened with mr um, apostolis so apostolis actually i supposed to ask you that uh, uh, please uh, tell me something about dubai education system i think we have apostolis. lost him. i think we have lost him again oh seems okay. okay okay so uh, mr nirmal you just tell me that, uh, that the admission requirement for normally you know all the universities and colleges in dubai so yeah. what is the admission requirements sure so uh, before that i will just quickly touch upon you know education system in dubai because uh, we cannot have professor apostolis uh, able to join because of these technical issues so i will just very quickly in 2 minutes time just talk about the major education systems in dubai yeah. linked to which is the admission procedure yeah. so in dubai uh, you know dubai is the world's largest education cluster dubai international academic city and dubai knowledge village so they have created the world's largest education cluster which means 21 foreign universities and two business schools already present in dubai 
27,500 students are studying on the Dubai International Academic City campus. Majority of them are international students. And why is it the largest education cluster? Because it has the maximum number of foreign university branch campuses. What I mean by branch campuses is that it, uh, the UK, Australian, and European universities have uh, created their own uh, campus in Dubai. So the quality of education, the system of education, and including the faculties, everything is of multinational standards. Everything is of their home country standards. And that is why the education requirement also is aligned with what the education requirement may be for a UK university, Australian university, or an American university in their home country. But there are some business schools which are taking a stretch extra. So typically, generally, student will need an IELTS score to prove that you know he has decent English proficiency. Generally, universities in Dubai ask for IELTS on the band of six. <clears throat> the student needs to have completed his grade 12 if he wants to directly come onto you know the first year of bachelor's or, or graduation uh, degree pathway. If the student wants to come for master's, then they should have completed bachelor's or graduation. The requirement of marks minimum percentage varies from uh, you know university to university. But the other important requirement is that uh, there are some universities which also conduct an interview of the student, which is a Skype interview or a telephonic interview, to understand the English proficiency and uh, also you know the motivations of the student. After which the students have to give their academic documents and uh, passport. And then the visa processing starts. We will later on touch upon the student visa process in detail. But over here, I would like to mention that uh, there are some business schools which are offering new age courses like hospitality management, uh, events management, uh, you know, sports management, films and media, and such you know new age careers and qualifications which have great employment demand in Dubai. Now they understand that the student who will take these qualifications will be those who have passion for them. Okay, they are not necessarily those who are bookworms or you know who are who have got wonderful, fantastic grades, but they have a lot of passion for these kind of professions. They want to convert their passion into a career, into a profession. So for such students, IELTS is exempted. You don't need to give an IELTS score. Okay, Instead of an IELTS score, such business schools do a telephonic interview or a Skype interview to assess the English proficiency. Plus, they don't need to write a detailed statement of purpose. The statement of purpose is included in the admission application form itself. So within the admission application form, they have to mention, give answers to various questions, which leads them to writing their statement of purpose. Also, the minimum percentage requirement is flexible in case of certain such business schools. So this makes the entry into a UK uh, university or a UK business school very easy in Dubai as compared to what they would require in the UK. Because Mr. Asad, if you know that, uh, and who knows better than you, you have applied for thousands of students, you know, visas across the globe. It is the immigration and the embassy's requirement in the UK that they should have an IELTS score, right? But there is no such immigration or no such embassy requirement in Dubai. Dubai does not ask, immigration does not ask for an IELTS score. So it means that the university can have its own internal placement test Okay, which is which is an online test to assess the English proficiency of the student. And there are some business schools which also give free of cost remedial English lectures to the students who are found weak in their uh, you know, English uh, score so that they are polished once they come to Dubai. So the basic thing is uh, from Bangladeshi, if any Bangladeshi students want to study in Dubai, so that time, uh, their academic background their result will be 50 percent right like yes. they need to uh, get 50 percent marks on their 12th class right? Right. higher right. secondary level okay right. and that uh, if, if that the students uh, don't have IELTS, that time the college or university they will take a skype interview yes. and uh, after that okay they will start the yeah. process for admission yeah i think sounds good so that time obviously this is a very good news for all the students uh, for our country that uh, no need IELTS, so student can go without IELTS, right? 
Yes. Also, Mr. Asad, I want to uh, emphasize on uh, two more opportunities for the students, you know, to study in Dubai. The first is the students who are not grade 12 pass yet, uh, who are just grade 10 pass. Okay. Mm -hmm. Means senior secondary school, but not high school. They also can come directly for bachelors by doing an integrated foundation. So there are just a few business schools who give this uh, flexibility of, uh, of merging the foundation or the bridging course along the actual studies. So the students first in the first six months, they complete the, the you know, UK level three uh, diploma or the foundation course. And then they onboard or come on to the UK level four, which is the first year of uh, bachelor's directly. So they still take four years to complete a honors degree and not take five years. So they have saved on grade 11 and 12, two years. And yet, you know, they are just taking four years to get an honors degree. That is one opportunity. And there is a second opportunity also. There are some students who are professionals. They have been like, let's say, hospitality industry. You know, there is a great chef, you know, who's been doing very well with five-star hotels and, and he has a great work experience. But he has taken degrees in culinary, means cooking related qualification, but he does not have graduation. But he has the desire to do a post-graduation qualification, come to Dubai and, you know, take a ex experience. So the students are able, those who are professionals, who have five years or more of work experience, are able to come uh, to Dubai and study for post-graduation or professional uh, programs, professional diploma programs, even if they are not graduates. All they need to have is a grade 12 or a high school qualification. That's good. So I think Mr. Apostolis, again, we got him. So uh, Mr. Apostolis, you just uh, uh, tell us the, you know, uh, uh, what is the benefits actually student will get uh, from Dubai if they will st start their study in Dubai? Also, okay. Professor, you know, because you are so experienced in, uh, you know, UK education methodology, if you can mm -hmm. also touch upon for the benefit of students, you know, about uh, about the various education uh, methods and streams like UK education method in Dubai. Certainly. So uh, Dubai is considered to be the world's largest education zone. Uh, that is the reason that Dubai currently has 21 universities and two business schools. I think the numbers speak themselves. The majority of education that happens in Dubai is international education. As mentioned before, I guess, the UK education system is the most prevalent among, among them. What makes now the difference is that the UK education system is research-driven. Unlike the typical exams that uh, students know, the ones that most probably they also had in their own country, this is not happening here. Research is considered to be the key to complete the understanding of each scientific field. Students are given assignments which they have to complete. Students need to complete and apply their assignments that they have learned throughout the semester, throughout the classes, step by step. Then the faculty assess the assignment and how clearly the student presents the topic, how good is their ability to create action knowledge to respond to real situation out, out there at the industry. At the end of the semester, you do not have those exam papers, you do not have the overnight standing, but this assignment that you work day by day. Um, we could say that this is an open book examination, but with industry driven challenges, um, questions, and uh, all this covered around research. The faculty will be there for the students, they are given more than 20, 25 days to work on the on their assignment, and um, also they have all the support required throughout this uh, this uh, process. Um, also, there are no textbooks given in the UK uh, education, but they are given resources. They are given material where they can do their own uh, research independently, along with what they have learned in the classroom. Um, again, it's not uh, about the understanding of the concept, it's more about how you can apply the concept. And this is what is important with coupling the formal education along with the experience out there in our industry. Um, now, if you go through the UK curriculum, the qualifications are also very practical and uh, flexible. Uh, in typical university studies, if the students run uh, two years, but then they stop, then they lose the year. Um, and uh, he, 
he or she does not get a degree. However, in uh, many cases in, in life, we have to drop out for maybe family reasons or many other reasons. This, this is not the UK system. Uh, the UK system is the credit system. Credit around the world. They are I say that they are like like dollars, like and recognize those threats to any similar system around the globe. Um, another benefit for the students is that um, they are able to, to take transfers. They can transfer to any similar institution and continue their studies. There are students who, after finishing the, the two years, they continue to another institution in the UK or in France, or they can go directly to the third year uh, for instance, um, at the end of the first year, at the end of the second year, at the end of the third year. Um, we are industry oriented, we are industry driven, and why, why stop someone who wants to work in parallel with their studies, to work in the industry in parallel with their, their studies? Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, actually, for explaining. Uh, Mr. Shah, actually, I just, uh, the main major part, all the students wants to know um, that uh, you just uh, tell us the step-by-step -step process to get the visa. Hmm. Sure. Uh, so there is some uh, some some songs to hear uh, when I speak you know, for the students. And the music in what I talk is uh, that no need for bank statements, no need for proof of funds, no need for show money. The students just need to give their passport and their mark sheets and academic documents to the university or the business school or the college. And the university will sponsor the visa of the student. So the student does not need to go to the embassy, the UAE embassy in their home country. They just have to give the academic documents and passport. And the university will become the sponsor of the visa. The meaning of sponsor of the visa is that all the responsibility is taken by the university. And that is why the immigration does not go and do any financial background check, does not do any other, uh, you know, normal checks that any other embassy would do. So they would do a criminal background check. Uh, but, you know, the financial background check is not because the whole responsibility is taken by the university. The university becomes the sponsor. We have seen that in general, uh, the visas uh, are issued within 15 to 20 days time. So, but, but you know given the now new situation new scenario processes may change and it may take some more time but you can expect that within one month one one and a half months you know students will get their uh, student visa now the student visa mr asad is a residence visa okay so i will tell you the process and the steps once the student gives the passport documents to the university and they give the visa application charges the university will go take their documents to the immigration open the visa file and become the sponsor of the student in front of the immigration. So the university will give an undertaking to the immigration that any problem, anything, then okay, we are fully responsible for the student. Yeah? Then immigration will issue, okay, what they call student visa entry permit. It is an electronic visa, okay, which clearly states that this is a student residence entry permit. So the student is coming in Dubai not as a visitor, not as a tourist, but as a resident. So with this electronic entry permit the student has to take the printout of this electronic entry permit and the university or the the business school or the college will give the student an immigration letter for their home country saying that the student is a bona fide student we as a university are taking full charge of the student and you please allow him to fly so with this electronic entry permit and the letter addressed to the immigration by the university the student will fly from his home country and come to dubai once they come to dubai there are few procedures that have to be followed and why do they have to be followed because the student is becoming a resident of dubai so every resident of dubai like you know how in america you have a social security card like that every resident in dubai needs to have a emirates id card which is like the residence id card of the student before issuance of this residence id card there are few processes that have to be done so once the student comes inside the country there is a medical test that is done for the student biometrics and retina scan is done so the retina scan fingerprints and things like that is uh, done for the student so all those things are completed then the student has to proceed and take a medical insurance okay? 
which in our case we only facilitate for the student at the at the most nominal cost once the medical insurance has been taken this the visa is stuck on the passport which we call visa stamping so there is a physical visa stuck on the physical passport until then the passport remains with the immigration so when the student comes to begin the process they have to submit the passport uh, when they go for the medical and emirates id forms means when they go for the biometrics and medical uh, uh, checkup they have to submit the passport to the authority over there and the authority after positive medical result and after biometrics and everything they will stick the visa on their passport within 2 weeks of them getting the visa stuck on their passport the students will get a green colored residence id card which is called the emirates id card but the process does not stop over here business school is like ours we go and support the student even beyond so we take this residence id card and hand hold them to get a work permit card done for the student so after the student has a residence id card uh, the student can go and apply for various part time job opportunities okay and uh, you know we facilitate for our students you know to go for various interviews or there's a placement department you know which finds out various opportunities which are paid internships part time paid jobs for the students so that they can take invaluable work experience while they are studying once they get an offer from any company okay the university or the college will issue a no objection certificate because the student is on the sponsorship of the university okay the university has to say i have no objection in the student taking work experience and working part time so once there is a no objection letter with the offer letter of the company the student will uh, you know the company will only do this process they will go and submit this to the labor department which is called ministry of human resources and amortization and based on this the ministry of human resources and amortization will issue a work permit card okay so the student always in his pockets has to keep they don't need to keep the passport with them they keep keep the passport in the locker you have to keep the emirates id card which is the residence id card and your work permit card with you so that's the procedure right from getting entry permit to work permit okay in dubai to be able to part yeah okay okay thank you so um i suppose to ask but you already answered about the work uh, work opportunity now you tell us that um what is the process to get the pr you know after finishing their study will they get pr uh, the, get the opportunity to get the permanent residency Sure. This is a very valid question, Mr. Asad. You know, and the questions you are asking are all very relevant for the students. I'm happy. You know, you are making the most of the time that we have actually. Uh, so, in 2019, in the Dubai government opened up what is called as Gold Card. How in America we have the Green Card. If you see, you know, the Green Card is like permanent residency in America or the USA. The Dubai government launched Gold Card or the Golden Visa. Golden Visa or the Gold Card is like you know the. Uh, PR pathway, you know, permanent residency pathway. So these are ten-year visa which is auto renewable every ten years. So it's like as good as permanent residency. So you get a ten-year visa one shot, and that ten-year visa gets renewed at the end of those ten years. So every ten years, you know, you are practically it's like, and you then are able to once you have the gold card or the golden visa, you are able to sponsor your family as well. So one person getting the gold card means the whole family, you know, is kind of. sponsored on a on a gold card or a golden visa you know which is auto renewable the requirements for getting so 6800 6800 people in 2019 itself became eligible for the gold card or the golden visa from 70 different countries okay so so let's understand that you know dubai is a very cosmopolitan uh, place and i'll also want to highlight that dubai has 91% population which is expatriate population 91% of the people in dubai are foreigners only 9% is their local population so uh, unlike you know the western world where you know you will see politicians taking advantage of the situation and saying our people our jobs you are mm. foreigner you go away you know you are taking away our jobs like nothing like that in dubai nothing like that in dubai because 91% of the population is foreigners if they go how will the 9% people survive mm. you know this it is this 91% people who have made the country for so they are saying come and build the country for us you know like how you how i said that just one month back 100% foreign ownership they have changed the rules and regulations 100% foreign ownership this gold card golden visa recent changes in the regulation so who can apply who can apply for the gold card golden visa scientist doctor businessman investor or outstanding students 
outstanding students after their graduation can apply for the uh, gold card or the golden visa what is the meaning of outstanding outstanding means 3.75 gpa on the scale of 4 so if you have 3.75 gpa you can apply for the gold card or the golden visa but what if you are not an outstanding student you will go back to your home country will you have to go back if you are not an outstanding student if you don't get 3.75 gpa then what so it's a very valid question in the minds of the students right so mm -hmm. what if i'm not an outstanding student what what about me then you know are there any stay back options yeah so let me tell you there are multiple stay back options in the okay. okay i will tell about them one by one first is employment visa okay unlike other developed countries where you need to wait for the completion of your student visa for the completion of your studies and then what you get something called as post study work or post study work visa unlike that in dubai you can go on an employment visa from a student visa even when you are a student so let's say a student comes for a four years honors you know honors degree honors pathway and after two years because there are some business schools which are encouraging students to work part time for work experience so they are working part time they are doing a paid internship and then the employer likes very very good you know performance at work i want to give you employment visa i want to make you a permanent employee you know from a intern or from a, a part time job and i will sponsor your employment visa then officially as a, a business school you know in dubai we will cancel the student visa and transfer the student to an employment visa so the student does not need to wait for completion of the four years to look for an opportunity for a job the whole four years become an opportunity for the student to look for a job but let's say unfortunately for all the four years you did not find somebody who can sponsor your visa you did not find a company which will give you an employment visa which is very rare possibility but let's say we were unfortunate then what mm -hmm. then there is a freelancer visa in dubai so you you can call yourself a solo entrepreneur or a solo preneur okay entrepreneur a businessman solo businessman and you can transfer to a freelancer visa and as a business school we will support you in the whole process for doing that so if you are not employed you can call yourself self employed and you can get the visa which is a 3 year visa renewable every. then there is another option which is called uh, sometime back uh, they had launched uh, a job seeker visa so the students the rules keep changing they should go and uh, see if that's still valid or not but there was a job seeker visa also so after completion you know there was some time that you know you can take 6 months and look for a job so that's a job seeker visa that you can hmm. there is also possibility for student let's say at the end of the four years okay of your getting your honors degree you could not uh, you know complete your education so you could not uh, find uh, the uh, the employment then there is also possibility of extension of student visa how the extension can happen that you should contact your university or uh, business school and they will guide you on how to extend the student visa by one year so you get one more year so now it's five years for you to actually you know look at uh, employment opportunity yeah got it and uh, you would have seen mr asad you know i mean you yourself must be having some or the other distant relative or family you know living in dubai so there are mm -hmm. many people men, many many families who are settled from bangladesh in dubai already Uh, and they are you know on employment visa and their employment visa keeps renewing and for 60 years or more you know they they stay in dubai uh, on these visas yeah okay so uh, yeah you explained very well like uh, you know so i think the students they got uh, the information that how they will um, study there and how they will uh, get the peer opportunity and obviously the part time job facility so everything you shared actually very well Uh, last of all i am asking you that um, that some students wants to know about the accommodation sure that the college they will accommodate them like they have the hostel yeah so a couple of things i want to highlight uh, mr asad here yes uh, the college or the business school has its own hostel facility and uh, it's a very reasonable hostel facility where the students get free wifi free internet uh, you know they get unlimited home calling free based on subscription transport is also covered so it's a free transport 24 hours air conditioned uh, you know hostel apartments and uh, that is all for you know a very very affordable nominal cost for the student it's a fully equipped kitchen so the students just have to get groceries and cook their food but what we see mr asad is that students generally and we advise students to take a hostel accommodation for one quarter means 3 months when they come because for the first 3 months you know like one one and a half months will go in them getting the residence id card 
then you know they will need to learn the internal transport system there are three things which are very costly in dubai one is rental okay the rents are very high in dubai second transport if you don't have your own car you don't have your license then traveling by taxi though there is public transport but that also you know i mean it's not last mile connectivity so you know public transport plus taxis put together is a very high bill that the students have to pay uh, if they travel by you know if they if the travel is something that they know don't know how to figure out and the third cost is uh, telephone because telecom companies are you know uh, are are less so there is more uh, less competition and the rates are re relatively higher than home countries so these three things burn holes in their pockets and that is what we have capped we have sealed the cost of this by bringing in hostel accommodation which is fully air conditioned electricity water fully equipped kitchen wifi internet uh, everything covered in it okay uh, then we are giving free transport so for the first 3 months students don't have to worry about transport so they ride from their hostel to college uh, hostel to business school hostel to internships hostel to practical trainings everything gets covered by you know the college transport and the third thing is that uh, there is a subscription given to the students for calling to their home country so the students can call unlimited you know back to their home country using some subscriptions that the, uh, that the hostel itself will provide for them so for the first 3 months you know they their cost is capped then once they get their residence id card what students do is that they uh, along with four five friends you know they take a apartment on rent and then all of them will share the cost of the apartment they will go and live nearby their place of part time job or place of internship okay so this is what they figure out with so first 3 months you know they will figure out the whole of dubai how to travel how to save money how to manage within you know decent cost everything they will figure out in the first 3 months that is why we advise that you should take for first 3 months and then figure out yourself uh also you know mr asad i would want to highlight a couple of points that uh, dubai is a great platform and a landscape for students not just to look at dubai as a third richest country in the world to settle but also migrate further to seven more countries from dubai that is a unique opportunity that only dubai provides because dubai has very high success rate of visa because the university or the business school will sponsor the visa so there is very high success rate so students can come to dubai from bangladesh and because of uk education methodology okay and and business schools like ours who have partnership with more than uh, you know through various awarding bodies 30 universities globally okay in seven different countries so the students can in the last year take a transfer to one of those uh, you know universities in that country like france finland australia canada new zealand usa america uk Uh, uh you know uh, europe so so you know like these developed countries there are already partnerships with various universities so students will have to apply for let's say the french visa they will apply for the france visa from dubai so their success rate of a france visa when applied from dubai is much more than when applied from bangladesh because they are already resident of dubai for 2 years when they study the first one year they can transfer after they study the first two years they can transfer so when they study for two years they are a resident of dubai for two years they have been able to afford the cost of education cost of living in dubai that is what the embassy or the ambassador of that country in dubai will see so their success rate is much higher plus their cost of education is reduced they can reduce the cost of studying in the uk by more than 50% when they come and study with a business school like ours for the first two years and then transfer to the uk in the third year they just have to bear the uk cost of education and uk cost of living for one year only and they get two year post study work visa imagine just by staying living and paying tuition fee for one last year they get two year post study work visa so why stay for three years in uk for a two year post study visa when you can stay for just one year and mr asad you know after this covid 19 situation you don't know which country is good for the student you know Uh, australia uk right. america everybody is having high unemployment rates so you don't know 3 years hence which country will change their laws so when you come to dubai for the first 2 years there is guarantee or 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 there is a guarantee of a quality education which is uk education plus there is very high success rate of student visa without any show money without any proof of funds without any bank statements the tuition fee and the cost of living can be capped when the business school like ours supports students with covid-19 scholarships and you know hostel facilities and things like that so they have low cost of education plus they get to work part time officially in dubai right so they are taking global work experience so all this is certain all this is sure in dubai and then at the end of 2 years then you decide now australia is good for me 
New Zealand is good for me, France is giving better opportunity or UK is giving better opportunity. And then choose your third year or the last year in the country where you want to transfer. So you reduce your cost, you reduce your investment, you reduce your risk, yet you get a two country exposure. Yet you get the chance to be able to make a career in Dubai and you get a chance to make a, be able to make a career in the UK or Australia or elsewhere. Okay, thank you, Mr. Shah. Actually, uh, you shared all the information, you know, re related to study in Dubai. Uh, and I believe that all the students um, who are watching this live session, obviously, now they got all the information, uh, you know, uh, regarding to about the um, programs and all the facilities. So now, the finally, you just tell me that. Uh, what about the scholarship? So Dubai universities and colleges, they are offering their scholarship? Yes, uh, Mr. Asad. But there is a subtle difference over here. So everybody started offering scholarships. But uh, we have to distinguish between genuine scholarships and, uh, uh, and you know, optical scholarships, you know, perception scholarships. So what I'm trying to say, Mr. Asad, and you are a best guide over here. Otherwise, students themselves will get confused. Students don't know which university or college is giving genuine scholarships and which are just, you know, increasing tuition fee and giving more scholarship. Right? There are some universities which may do that, you know, because, uh, uh, you know, there are every type of university and colleges across the globe. But then comes, you know, the great play or the expertise of uh, Sunway education and, you know, experts like yourself, where you are able to guide the students on which is a good value for money for them. Who is offering genuine scholarships? and whose tuition fee yet being very modest is giving good value to the students and hand holding them and supporting them so uh, like business schools like ours are giving uh, covid-19 scholarships handsome covid-19 scholarships and not just for 2020 so our board of governors uh, you know uh, uh, whenever the decision is taken it's taken for all the seven campuses together not just for the dubai campus uh, so the board of governors for all the seven campuses across six cities has, has taken the conscious decision that they will give uh, the COVID-19 scholarships until December 2021. Because we know that, you know, the impact may not, uh, you know, uh, completely die down in just 2020. So until December 2021, they are giving COVID-19 scholarship and which brings down the tuition fee drastically. Uh, and, you know, you already know what the tuition fees are. I don't need to mention about it unless you would want me to. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, it's not just about high scholarships and uh, tuition fee. It's also about the value that the students get. What is value? Value, according to me, is the methodology of the university or the business school to create not fresher graduates, okay, but to create experienced graduates, to ensure that the students are employable and self-employable both. So this is possible only when the business school or the university emphasizes on practical training, not just inside the classroom, okay, but uh, outside the classroom with industry faculty and work experience while the students are studying. So a business school like ours has evening and weekend lectures so that the students can work in the morning, take invaluable work experience. Mr. Rasad, it is not about earning money only. Okay, while they are studying, it is not about meeting their living cost. There are some of our students who are meeting both living cost and their tuition fee. Also, they are meeting by working part time. But it's not about that money, Mr. Asad. It is about that work experience. The problem is with the students that they ask about placements after completion of the course. They don't ask about placements when the course is going on. Now the students have to start asking the question: What about placement when we are studying? Okay, and that is not easy for a business school or a university, mind you. Students are just raw, you know, they, they are freshers. The university will need to change its education methodology and make all evening and weekend lectures. It's not easy, you know, all courses, all batches running together for, uh, you know, majority in weekend and evening so that students can, it's not easy. It's not easy to have a placement department that is focused on getting internships, uh, like, you know, we, for some of our programs, give 25 internships uh, to the students in a given year. So at the end of three years, the student would have done 75 internships, you know, so by the time he is out as a, gra you know, uh, by the time he graduates, he has his own industry network. He just does not need to depend on the placement cell for a placement. You know, they, uh, they already have great industry connects. They have built their great industry network by that time. So, uh, you know, it is value which matters. And that value is about, it is about return on investment.
it is not about less investment or more investment it is about return on investment and return on investment if somebody says is 3 years away and 4 years away please do not believe you know what is shown to you in future you know is return on investment has to be today that has to be not just in terms of knowledge it has to be in terms of skill sets and it has to be in terms of confidence to the student that yes i can money is not important small less more some students will learn more some students will learn less you know but it is about that confidence that i can be an industry professional because i am already an industry professional that is about you know value uh, of what the students are investing okay thank you so uh... আমি আমাদের স্টুডেন্ট যারা আমাদের লাইভ সেশন দেখতেছেন সবাইকে যেটা বলবো যে অনেকে ভাবতে পারে যে এমন ভাবতেছে অনেকে টেক্সট বললো আমাদের লাইভ চলা অবস্থাতেই যে এমন যে আমরা কেন আসলে দুবাই প্রমোট করতেছি বেসিক্যালি আমরা সবসময় মনে করি যে আমাদের ওটাই করা উচিত যেটা আমাদের স্টুডেন্টের জন্য অনেক সুবিধা বহন করে সো লাইক স্টুডেন্টের ভিসা পেতে অনেক সুবিধা স্টুডেন্ট কম টিউশন ফিসে ভালো একটা ডিগ্রি পাচ্ছে স্টুডেন্ট ভালো একটা কালচারের সঙ্গে নিজেকে ম্যাচ করে চলতে পারতেছে ভালো কালচার শিখতে পারতেছে অ্যাট দ্য সেম টাইম পার্ট টাইম জব করতে পারতেছে যেটা থেকে সে ভালো একটা আর্নিংও করতে পারতেছে সো সব দিক থেকে বিচার বিবেচনা করে আমরা কিন্তু দুবাইকে কনসিডার করতেই পারি আর দুবাইতে কিন্তু এই মুহূর্তে অনেক রিনোন ইউনিভার্সিটি রয়েছে যেগুলো আসলে যেখানে <laughs> যেখানে স্টুডেন্টের সার্টিফিকেটের ডিমান্ড থাকবে যেখানে স্টুডেন্টের পার্ট টাইম জবের ফ্যাসিলিটি থাকবে যেখানে স্টুডেন্ট পড়াশোনা শেষ করার পরে কিন্তু পেয়ার পাওয়ার একটা পসিবিলিটি থাকবে এই সব ব্যাপার যখন একটা জায়গায় হবে আমার মনে হয় ওই টাইপ ওই অপশনে যে আমাকে চুজ করতে হবে যে আমি এই কান্ট্রি চুজ করবো কি না সো আমরা এই আলোচনা থেকে আসলে যেটা সারাংশ যেটা আসলো সেটা হচ্ছে এরকম যে আমরা দুবাইকে কনসিডার করতে পারি সো এর থেকে যদি কোনো ইনফরমেশন আপনাদের জানা থাকে যে আপনারা কোনো ইনফরমেশন জানতে চান সো আমি আমি বলবো আমাদের যেহেতু এখন কোভিড নাইনটিনের টাইম সিচুয়েশন অবশ্যই ভালো না সো এই ক্ষেত্রে আমরা বলবো যে অফিস ভিজিট না করার জন্য অফিসিয়ালি আমাদের কিন্তু ভার্চুয়ালি জাস্ট অফিস ওপেন অর্থাৎ আমরা ফোন বা ম্যাসেঞ্জারের রিপ্লাই বা আমাদের অনলাইনগুলো অ্যাক্টিভ আছে বাট অফিসিয়ালি কিন্তু আমাদের ভিজিট করার অ্যালাউ না সেই ক্ষেত্রে আপনারা যদি চান আমাদের ওয়েবসাইটে ঢুকবেন ডাব্লু 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 ডট সানওয়ে অ্যাডমিশন ডট কম আমাদের ওইখানে ফোন নাম্বারগুলো দেওয়া আছে আপনি চাইলে আমাদের ম্যাসেঞ্জারে নক করেন আপনি যদি কোনো ইনফরমেশান জানতে চান ঠিক আছে সো থ্যাংক ইউ মিস্টার অ্যাপোস্টলিস অ্যান্ড মিস্টার শাহ ফর জয়নিং অন আওয়ার লাইভ শো অ্যান্ড অবভিয়াসলি আই বিলিভ দ্যাট অল দ্য স্টুডেন্টস হু আর ওয়াচিং দিস সেশন ইউ নো দে গট রিয়েলি ইউ নো দে গট টু নো অল দ্য ইনফরমেশন রিগার্ডিং টু স্টাডি ইন দুবাই and i believe that uh, uh, we will you will come again on our live show if you will get time and thank you for your time so uh, and and uh, have a good day thank you mr asad uh, thank you sunway admissions for this opportunity to us thank you